Hi there, I'm Joe Dudek, president and founder of Keyhole Marketing. And I'm Shannon Jarek. I work for Keyhole as the assistant brand manager. And this is Metaphorically Speaking, a podcast that explores the mysterious side of marketing. Hello, welcome back to Metaphorically Speaking. This is a- welcome back. Oh wow, he's singing. <laughs> I just had to add that in there after your welcome back. I loved it. That was so. really beautiful. I think you should incorporate that in every intro moving forward. I'm never doing that again. <laughs> the Cut the music. Joe's coming <laughs> in. <laughs> well, anyway, if you're done, I'll proceed. I'm done. Please go. <laughs> we are continuing our mini series that we're calling Cause in COVID or Colorado Springs. And this is just a series where we're talking, we're continuing to talk with small business owners and entrepreneurs in the Colorado Springs area about how their businesses um, and how they have been impacted by the coronavirus or COVID-19 pandemic that we're currently in. Yeah, this one we're going to talk with Max. I'm going to take a stab at it. Max Ziegenhagen. Uh, my wife, who's a German minor in college, is probably rolling over right now somewhere, <laughs> but... She's still alive, so she's just rolling over oh on the couch gosh. or something. But, Thank you for clarifying that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so he's from North Family Counseling, and yeah, it's just a, such an interesting story. I was really fascinated about this interview and interested in this because I just love, I mean, I was a psychology minor myself, and I just love sort of exploring, like, how has COVID-19 impacted people's lives mm-hmm. um, on a personal level? And he's dealing with that on the front lines. He had yeah. a strong uh, major things he's dealing with primarily with teen suicide and which is really a big problem here in Colorado Springs um, and maybe statewide but definitely in this area and so he's dealing a lot with that and you know now we have just new challenges of just dealing with people when you're you're around them 24 7 and you can't go out and do the, the normal things you would do to to just deal with life mm-hmm. and um yeah and like yeah, their interesting like their name says you know family counseling they're really addressing those at-home issues which he says are just escalating at this point you know you don't really yeah. have as much of an escape or a reprieve from that home life as maybe we did before covid so exactly <laughs> and he talks a little bit too about just how his business you know shifted from clearly a one-on-one mm-hmm. inter, interpersonal um, exchange to having to shift to a, a digital format, at least for, for a period of time and how that impacted conversations and relationships and therapy. Um, but it's interesting always to hear like how businesses are quick to, to respond and yeah. keep things going. And that's really fascinating to hear how, how he was able to do that. So absolutely really interesting story. Yeah. Max, thank you so much for sharing. Um, and Joe said it in the episode, but we're just really grateful for you and your team and what they're doing in the Colorado Springs community. So we hope you all enjoy listening to this interview with Max. Um, maybe just share a quick synopsis about, uh, North family counseling. Um, yeah, what do they? What do you offer? Maybe how long you guys have been in business? Um, why do you guys exist in the first place? Yeah, so I actually moved here to Colorado Springs in uh, the spring of 2017 to predominantly work with the teen suicide epidemic that was uh, present in this community at that time and is still a major issue here. Right. And I um, slowly thereafter started my own practice, North Family Counseling. It was just me at the time. Um, and it was, uh, pretty much full within the first month and a half of starting and recognizing the need for, uh, teen therapy alongside family therapy, which is really allowing the whole family to participate rather than simply trying to help this individual and put them back into a system that's maybe having some difficulties. It's an opportunity to help the entire system gain some functionality and be healthier. And I realized more and more as I was here, those first few months, um, just that the need for that was was huge. I had moved here from California, okay. where almost everyone is a marriage and family therapist. Sure. Um, and so it was unique to come to a community that needed um, that much more so than, than where I had just moved from. Mm, yeah. And then how has ex- the uh, practice expanded since then? Do you still work primarily with teens or has it gone a little larger than that? It's expanded a bit from there. And so we eventually took on more staff uh, in April of 2019. 
And um, we have four other therapists working alongside me at this point. So there's five of us and two administrators. And we really at, are, are attempting to create something that is sort of a holistic opportunity for family health uh, in the mental health world, being able to address marital issues, family strife, parenting, um, alongside the, the major issues such as depression, anxiety, addiction, and the stuff that just affects families daily function. So we yeah. want families to be able to thrive. Awesome. How was your business maybe immediately impacted by COVID? Um, you know, just in that, those initial weeks uh, when everything kind of rolled out, were you considered essential? Were you closed for a little while? What, what kind of played out for your business? Well, actually, that was just an incredible example of the immediate impact of the business is when we had to yeah. shift to this telehealth virtual format. I have two small kids and um, we had a huge impact on, on me being home and present and my kids are confused of let's play and hang out. <laughs> um, along with we saw an almost immediate halt in any inquiries related to therapy at the beginning for the first three mm. weeks. And prior to that, we had been... Um, really seeing an influx of, of people calling in and, and looking for help and assistance and seeking out um, somebody that was a good fit, both relationally and practically. And everything just sort of stopped. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's definitely picked back up again since then. But the shift has been that, that the things that we are receiving now have a lot more to do with acute crises uh, rather than simply kind of the idea of general family wellness and health. Can you can you describe that a little bit more for for the for us to understand what that is exactly? Yeah, I mean the simplest way to think about it is if you stick a family in their house and they're not able to find a reprieve from that experience in indoors, um, whatever difficulties already exist are going to be um, exacerbated or increased because mm -hmm. if you're already having some friction, if you stick together and you have no opportunity to breathe for a moment. It just sort of escalates. Yeah. And that's really what we've seen since the onset of March really is that things have increasingly escalated in the home. Um, if there are already marital difficulties, those difficulties have become much more acute and clear. If there's already family strife, the fighting has gotten worse. Um, and that's not to say that's happened for every single family across the board. I think a lot of people have really been encouraged by right. finding that they have a, a good rhythm or a structure that already exists that's really positive. But for a lot of us, it's been it's been pretty difficult. Yeah, and I know for our family, and we're, we've been in counseling, my wife and I, for, man, I don't know, eight, nine years. And, and we continue to meet with our counselor uh, in online. But, you know, you just go through seasons of this. So that, you know, sometimes we we're, we're feel really strong, and other times it seems like Groundhog Day where every, everything's the exact same and you're just worn out and you need some space. How have you – you mentioned that tele um, – or online, you know, counseling. Was that a platform you had already leveraged? Was that new to your practice? We had already been using it predominantly as a way to address if there was bad weather. Oh, okay. And so giving people an opportunity to still make use of their investment, but at the same time, not having to drive into the office if there was a bomb cyclone, like <laughs> for many years that was. Yeah. Um, but certain thing, just just providing an opportunity. Also, people were sick, but still feeling well enough where they still wanted to be able to talk to their therapist. Yeah. Um, but it was in, it was very minimally used, uh, and so it's it's become something that we use all the time now. Yeah. Are you able to meet uh, personally with people, or are you sort of only on the online? We are. So we're actually. I, I failed to mention kind of how we expanded, but we're addressing all sorts of family issues. But we're a a trauma specialized practice. Hmm. And so we, we tend to deal with the things that are more intense. And because of that, there are certain things for people where, where it's just best practice to have them be able to actually see somebody or interact with somebody in person. Yeah. And so we have the parameters in place to be able to do that well. Um, with the mask mandate, we are uh, needing to wear masks at this point in the office in addition to being able to still be open and clean and available for uh, clients, our offices are pretty large. And so we're able to sit pretty far apart. And, um, that's been a huge benefit to be able to still see people in person. Yeah. Um, it's just been necessary for a lot of people. Yeah. Yeah. I can imagine. I mean, we're, we've been able to make it work online. Our counselors in Florida, she was, we, when we lived in, Indi in Indiana, she was, uh, you know, right down the road, we were able to meet with her, but we've, we've kind of been in the virtual, 
uh, connection for a while has worked well, but I know for some, yeah, you just need that, uh, especially nowadays when you're just, it's hard to even see people, uh, family and friends. It's, it's nice to have a personal contact with somebody who's going deep in your life. I'm sure. Right. Um, what, how, what do you see as like maybe some long-term effects of this? Um, will you continue to kind of do a 50, 50 virtual, uh, face to face, uh, and, and maybe more from a technical standpoint, like how, how does it affect your business? But also what are some of the long-term impacts from a counseling standpoint, as far as the needs of your, your, your patients, your clients? I think there, there's been a couple of things that have been assessed as long-term changes. The presence of telehealth as a part of things, I think is it was already a part of the game, but it's really just become an implanted part of the process at this point for therapy because people can now access services in the state of Colorado and outside of it on a much easier basis uh, than was previously considered to be possible. And the guidelines around telehealth have finally been evaluated during this, which beforehand it was basically a mental health gray area that people were still trying to assess what was the legality around it. Are we going off of the laws in that state or this state? Are we attempting, do you have to meet in person at least once? There are a lot of questions that are now okay. being fleshed out um, by the governing boards of each state. So I think that's been really helpful. Mm -hmm. um, in addition to that though, there's been, I feel like there's been a, a bit of a change in recognizing how important aspects of family life and presence are because our culture has kind of created a system in which everybody has their place. Kids go to school, parents go to work, everybody yeah. has their sports and athletics and things that they participate in. And when a lot of those things stopped, I think it's become a lot more apparent that certain family systems weren't as healthy as we might have thought. Mm. And that there's an opportunity to really focus in on what it actually means to have healthy interpersonal relationships that are interdependent rather than anti-dependent or independent. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so that's become a big area of focus for us is, is trying to figure out what's the best way that a counseling practice along with other entities can really assist families at this time by providing content and opportunity to address the issues that have become more apparent during this time. Yeah, I was interested about that. How do you how do you sort of get the word out there? Are you you're just sort of here if somebody raises a hand and says, I have a need and you're available? Or are you trying to kind of get that word out there and market to those newfound needs uh, in this in this era we are in today. So that's actually been really interesting. And I think that's one of the biggest changes right now based on what's still happening is it's become increasingly difficult as you are well aware to get together or to sit down with people and to figure things out. And so I've had a lot of these types of interactions, not necessarily on podcasts, but Zoom calls and phone calls and, and virtual interaction with different um, groups, uh, there's an incredible group out in Denver called Equinox Wellness Center uh, that I had the opportunity to tour their facility and to get to know the staff there and to figure out what they're doing. In addition to meeting with, you know, different churches and different organizations like Cause We Love You um, that are here in town that are already doing quite a bit to provide assistance in what was already known to be really important. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so we're at this point in the in the phase of really asking around and trying to assess. We know there is a need. Um, but we're still trying to debate and kind of figure out or determine where we fit within that need. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, thanks so much for sharing more about your story. And I'm, I'm just so grateful for what you guys are doing in the community. This is, we've only been here a year. So just kind of finding out about some of the, the needs of the community, especially out here that are different than other parts of the, the country. And I just, thanks for your service and, and for continuing to offer and connect the people during such a weird time and, and uh, just thanks for the time today as well. Of course, yeah, thank you for making it a possibility. I love that you guys are bringing some visibility to the way that this has affected things business-wise and practically, and so I'm excited for what you guys are doing. Yeah, it's been interesting to hear some of these stories because uh, I guess I, I'm always a glass half full kind of guy anyways, and um, uh, you know, I would, I'm would i always hoping to hear some of these stories, but so far they've all been really encouraging of, of whether it's not just like business numbers and you know, clients and, and those types of things, but uh, just just the the resiliency of people um, and, and the businesses to, to, to find other ways to connect with their clients and their patients or their, their customers and 
yeah, it's been really, it's been really encouraging from that perspective because those aren't the, often the stories we hear. So it's been, it's been enlightening for me for sure. Yeah. I love that. And even getting to see too, there's, um, you know, when people are faced with difficulty like this, seeing families kind of come out of the woodwork and seek help and begin to talk about these things on social media or within their own groups or spheres of influence has been encouraging to see as well that things aren't just being left alone, but they're really being addressed. Yeah. Can you maybe just close this on maybe some practical things families can do at home? Uh, obviously, we've been able to leave the house a little bit more of, of late, uh, but things may change back to the way they were. Are there some things that you could offer just some practical tips for families to to connect in, in at home and in, in, in that way? I mean, the reality is there are so many different things I could say, but boiled down to the simplest thought mm-hmm. is we're, we've become a reactionary culture and we tend to simply do things as they come. We're very busy and move forward moving. And the the most important thing that I've seen when families have really acclimated or pivoted during this time incredibly well is when they took the time to be intentional, to sit down, to consider things as parents and to sit down with their kids and to really think through how they want to spend their time and what they actually want it to look like, Mm -hmm. as opposed to just finding themselves creating new habits and structures around I don't know, excessive TV or bickering and arguing or leaving the house unclean. There's there's simple things in structure that we can create to allow the rest of the day to be really fluid and relaxing as yeah. long as we're intentional about it. And so it's just having the conversation really and being calming down and relaxing enough to take a moment to figure out what's actually needed. Yeah. Well, that that can be the awkward part, right? Of having yeah. to actually engage with, <laughs> with people that you've you've been in the same room with and house house with for 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 years and and certainly months. But uh, you know, just to pull ourselves up from our devices and to actually see each other face to face. So, thanks so much again, Max, and uh, appreciate your time. Great, thanks so much. Thanks for having me, and I hope you have a great day. Thanks, you too. You've been listening to the Cause and COVID mini series on the Metaphorically Speaking podcast. At Keyhole Marketing, we tell big stories for small businesses. If you're in the Colorado Springs area and struggling to tell your story in this season, we'd love to come alongside you and help you with your content, branding, SEO, social media, or photography needs. Send us an email at hi at keyholemarketing.us if we can help.